My name is Teresa Mendoza, and I'm a technical service scientist at BioLegend. Customers often ask which controls they have to include in an experiment. And for in today's video, I'm going to be covering the advantages and disadvantages of using different staining and gating controls. So gating controls are really helpful for determining which population or which percentage of your cells are negative and which are positive. And so for this purpose, I really recommend using fluorescence minus one or FMO controls. FMO controls essentially consist of your samples being stained with all the fluorophores except one. And the main advantage of this method is that it accounts for spreading error that's commonly seen in larger multicolored flow panels. Another advantage is it's actually the preferred gating method to use for most flow experiments. However, the con is that it doesn't really account for your background staining. So when running larger multicolor flow panels, a concern is whether you have to create an FMO control for all the markers. And the textbook answer is yes, you actually should. It's really good practice to create an FMO control for all the markers. And I know it's not always possible because you might have limited samples or reagents. And so for this, my main tip would be to create a list and divide your markers into two groups. So your group A markers are the ones that are either early expressed or there's not a clear separation between your populations, or sometimes you're just not sure. So if you don't know what the expression is going to be like of the marker, these are your group A markers. And then things that have a clear bimodal expression are going to fall under your group B category. And so think of group A as your high priority group. These are the ones you should absolutely create FMO controls first. That way, if you run out of samples, you'll still be able to run the proper gating analysis. Staining controls help you identify whether the staining you see is real or just a byproduct of an artifact. The first type we'll talk about are isotype controls. Isotype control antibodies have the same class and type as the primary antibody, however, they don't have antigen specificity. So for example, if you're using your isotype control antibody to stain with cells, and you're seeing a high level of signal, then consider using a specialized solution like human or mouse tree stain to see if the signal goes down. Alternatively, you could use serum instead. A disadvantage of using isotype controls is that it doesn't really account for fluorescent spillover like FMO controls do. This is the reason why it's not really the preferred way to set gates in your experiment. Unstained cells are really helpful for determining your sample's autofluorescence. And then in cases of certain autocompensation softwares, it's actually required to include However, besides these things, unstained cells unfortunately have limited use for multicolor flow experiments. So in today's video, we discussed gating and staining controls. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to tech at biolegend.com.